Okay, so we are talking about Module 2. And what we talk about this week in Zybooks are strings. Now, most people know what a string is. They know what a sentence is. They know what a word is. Um, but when you translate that into a computer language, you kind of have to understand the mechanisms behind a string. A string is simply a sequence of characters. That's all it is. Now, it's more than just the characters that we can see. I can see this word, it's S-T-R-I-N-G, and I can see that there's a space here. But when it comes to computer programming languages, there are other things that we can't see, like a tab, like a new line. And we're also going to learn in this module how to deal with those. So the important thing to under, the first important thing to understand about a string is that it is simply a sequence of characters. And those characters can be accessed using an index number because a string is not an atomic entity. It's not something unto itself. It is made up of different parts. And we can see this here when we talk about string indexing. They are T-R-I-S-H and a space. And you'll see these numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. That is because you can get to the letter T in this string by using the variable name plus an index. So let me show you here. And by the way, I think it will be faster. So instead of typing in new code, I'm reusing code that I have done before, but we're going to walk through this code. And if you have any questions associated with the code or want to see different examples, let me know. Um, hold on, I'm going to put this do not disturb on. Okay. So what we have here is we just have this simple string. I called simple string.py. And in simple string.py, I have a variable called name. I know it's a variable because it is on the left hand side of a single equal sign. On the right hand side of the single equal sign is the value that I am assigning to name, and that value is the string Lisa. L-I-S-A. I know it's a string in Python because it's within quotes. Now this could be in double quotes or it could be in single quotes. But it has to be in quotes and the quotes have to be evenly matched. So if it starts with a quote, it has to end with a quote. And in a moment I will show you what will happen if that is not, if they're not balanced. But right now I want to go and I want to walk through this code because I want to show you what is happening in the sequence that is the string. And the string's variable name is name and the string's value is Lisa. So I'm going to let's see, simple string. I'm just going to walk through this. Start the debugger. And you'll see I'm on line three. If I go to the console and I step over, now this is important because I like debuggers. I use them all the time in my daily life and I think they're very helpful. So right now the program is stopped. It's waiting for me to run. I know it stopped because I put a breakpoint there. And I have this blue line that shows me where I am. So I'm going to step over, and you'll see its printed name is Lisa. And now I have, let me move this over. I have this, and make this a little bigger. Okay. I have this line here, okay? And it is print name open square bracket zero close square bracket is, and then this is the, 
the um, the thing that's waiting to get what I'm going to put in it. And what I'm going to put in it is something from name. So here I printed out the whole name and I got LISA. That's the whole name. Here I'm I'm doing this thing with a square bracket open, square bracket close, and a zero. What in the world am I doing? I am asking Python to print for me the first element in the sequence that is name. Name is a sequence of characters. I know it's a sequence because it's a string. It has to be a sequence. And the way I get at anything in Python that is a sequence is by using this particular syntax. And the syntax is open square bracket. The, the place that I want to get the information from and close square bracket. And you'll see PyCharm just did something nice for me. It highlighted those square brackets. And when you are programming, that will be a very handy thing because it will tell you if they are balanced. If you do not have a closing square bracket to go along with your opening square bracket or vice versa, Python's not going to run. It's going to give you nasty errors. And I'll show you what those errors are in just a minute. So here I'm on line five. And when I step over line five, I have name of zero is L. And that's how, that's how you read it. Name of zero is L. So that's what name of zero gave me. It gave me L. And one is going to give me I. And two is going to give me S. And if I'm right, Okay, no, it won't do that. I thought PyCharm would show it, show me each individual one, but it won't. And name of three, we'll go back to where I was. Name of three is A. Now I did something here because it's gonna it's gonna break on this line. So let's go back and talk about something. I started at zero. I didn't start at one. I started at zero, and that is because all sequences in Python start with zero. The first element has an index of zero. Why? I don't know. That's just the way they did it, and that's just how we have to handle it. So I have LISA, and I'll print it out nicely here. And that means I have four characters. I have zero, one, two, and three. That's an important thing to remember. It starts at zero, so it's not going to end at four. It's going to end at three. Now I'm about to try and print that fourth character. So what do we think is going to happen? Well, I can tell you Python's not going to like it. And so I get this wonderful error message. And basically it says string index out of range. And that's because it is. I only had four characters, L, I, S, and A. When I told Python to get name at index of four, I was telling it to get the fifth character, and there was no fifth character. So that's what an index out of range means. It means that you have tried to get a, an element in the sequence that doesn't exist, and it doesn't exist because the sequence isn't as long as maybe we thought it was. So now let's go for a little bit of balancing. I'm going to finish this up. So let's see what happens if I don't have a closing quote. Well, first of all, PyCharm gives me an error. And that's OK. So now I'm going to run it. And it's syntax error, EOL while scanning string literal. EOL is normally end of line. So it's telling you that there's something wrong with this line. When we look at this line, we can see that it only has an opening quote and not a, cl a closing quote. So if I do a closing quote, it works. But how about instead of an opening double quote, I do a single quote. So the difference is I have a single quote at the beginning and a double quote at the end. What happens if I run it? Well, EOL while scanning string literal. Now you look at it and you say, I've got two quotation marks, but they're not the same kind. 
So they have to be the same kind, either single or double, and they have to match. And then everything works fine, except for that one. So that's what we mean by string indexing. Um, so the len function. So there's a way to tell what the length of a string is. And we do that by printing the length. So up here, I can say print So here, I've just added a line, print, the length of name is. And I'm using this function called len. Every sequence has a length, and I find out that length by the len function. So if I run this, it says the length of name is 4. Whoops. My bad. The length of name is 4, OK? And that's because I asked Python, Python to tell me the length. And that's going to be important. Right now, it's not as important. But as you move on and you start to get into more sequence usage, len is going to be your friend. Uh, OK. By the way, stop me and let me know if there's a particular challenge or a um, or a particular lab you want to go through. So concatenating strings. Concatenating strings basically means you just add two strings together. Now, you can't, um, you can't add a string and an integer. You can't add a string and a float. You can only add a string to a string. And basically, string concatenation is just adding them together with the plus sign. So do I already have an example for concatenate? Concatenate. OK. So here is just another program. This is just called concatenate.py. And my first name is Lisa, and my last name is Shannon. And I want to create a full name. OK? So I can do that by adding them together, literally using the add it, the addition sign, and where's concatenate, there's concatenate, and adding them together. So here I have used the add sign, okay? And I've also done something. I've added a space in between it because I don't want Lisa and Shannon to be butted up against. So if I run this, it says full name Lisa Shannon, and I also have Lisa underscore Shannon. Now, what if I didn't have that space there? Let me just remove that. If I didn't have that space, then I get Lisa Shannon without a space. Python does exactly what I tell it to do. And if I tell it to add a space, it's going to add a space. But if I don't tell it to space, it's not going to add a space. So um, I could also add a new line here. And then. I would have Lisa, a new line, Shannon. So that is what string concatenation is all about. It is about taking two strings and adding them together, or three strings or four strings. So list basics. So string is a list. That's all it is. And what they're talking about right now is they're talking generically about what a list is. A string is a specific form of a list. Um, a list is just a collection. It's just one thing right after another. It can be a name. It can be integers and floats and strings and booleans all together. They are simply um, they're just a sequence of things. And there's a specific nomenclature that you use, which is that open and close square brackets. Um, and everything separated by a comma. So here you've just got the Python interpreter and telling it that you have 
three strings. Do I have a simple? Whoops. Let me see what that is. Could you possibly give a good example of what a float is? Okay, I will definitely give you an example of what a float is, Michael. Um, and we will get to types in a minute. I promise not to forget. So accessing a list element is what we just talked about when it comes to strings. So there is a position. Everything has a position. Just Lisa had 0, 1, 2, and 3. Every list, just like every string, has that kind of ability to get to the value because that's what accessing means. Um, here are some sequence type functions and we're going to go and get them. We're going we're gonna to go back through these later when we just do lists and dictionaries. But we have our friend here, Lynn, the length of a list. You can produce a new list by adding two lists together. You can get the minimum, you can get the maximum, you can sum if they're integers or floats. Um, you can find the index number for a val, or you can find you can count the number of occurrences of the value in a list. And this is going to be important for one of your um, labs. So when they're talking about counting the number, let's say somebody put in an n and they want to know in a string how many n's are in that string, you're going to want to use count. Okay, tuples. I'm not really going to spend a lot of time on tuples. I don't use tuples in my daily life. So um, basically, um, a tuple is a list that is immutable. It can't be changed. And it's a specific kind. You don't even use parentheses. You don't use... Uh, square brackets, um, but that's what a tuple is. I don't use it. Um, we don't use it again in this class. They just uh, introduce it. Oh, and one other thing I wanted to tell you about strings. Uh, strings are not are immutable. Strings can't be changed. You can create a new string from an old string, but you cannot change a string. And, and that sounds like it might be splitting hairs, but it's not. It's an important feature of strings in Python. So there are two types of collections in Python. Two types of, yeah. There is a list and a dictionary. And again, this is a brief introduction to dictionary basics um, because it's good to start thinking about them. We're going to have a whole module on lists and dictionaries. So if you don't quite understand what they are now, it's okay, we will get to them, okay? Lists use square brackets to create them. Dictionaries use curly brackets. So when you're looking at something with an opening left curly brace and a closing right curly brace, you are looking at a dictionary. Dictionaries don't have indexes. They have what they call key value pairs. And you'll have a key a colon, and then a value. And then a comma if there's another key value pair. So that's basically what a dictionary is. The biggest difference between a dictionary, the, the next biggest difference between a dictionary and a list is that dictionaries don't have indexes. You can't get to the fourth element in a dictionary. If you want to know what Lionel Messi's number is, you have to give it Lionel Messi at when you are um, asking, when you are telling Python that you want to get a value associated with something. So, and we can go back and look at these challenges if you want. I know that last week I didn't cover as much as I wanted, so I'm kind of going through some of the stuff that we're going to be covering again. Okay, numeric types. So we have strings, we have lists and dictionaries, and now we're getting to numeric types. So there's an integer and a float. 
An integer is just that. It simply is a whole number. It does not have a decimal point. A float is a number, but it does have a decimal point. So um, let me just, do I have a simple format? No. Let's see what's in type conversion. Okay. Um, we'll just add it to this. So, an integer is going to be a whole number. A float is going to be oops, 10 points. It's going to be a number with a decimal place and some things after the decimal place. And that's the basic difference. Now, why do we have a difference? Well, because in Python, an integer in the memory, because all programs run in memory on your computer, and every program takes up space. So when you're dealing with a language like Python, an integer takes up less space than a float does. And this matters when you're, you know, writing Pinterest in Python, because that's what most of Pinterest is written in is Python. So space matters. So use an integer when you aren't going to need decimal places. Use a float when you are. So let's just see what happens. I'm going to print my int, and I'm going to print my float. So and I promise I'll, I'll show you where I'm going in just a minute. Okay, so this is what? This is type conversion. Okay. So I'm just going to print these few things, and you'll see, ignore the 2.1 here. You see 10 and 5. So now I'm going to do something different. All I'm going to do is I'm going to convert these. So, and Python gives us functions to convert the types. So if I want to convert an integer to a float, I can simply say float. And if I want to convert a float to an int, I can say int around my float. So now what was an integer is going to be a float, and what was a float is going to be an integer. And if I run that, you will notice that I have 10.0 because I turned my 10 into a float. So by definition, it's going to have a decimal place and at least one number after that decimal. And I turned my float into an int, and it printed 10. It lost the 0.55 because we don't round up in Python. We don't round down. It simply truncates. Whatever is the decimal point and to the right, goes away. So that is, that's the difference between an int and a float. Does that help, Michael? Okay. Let me know in the chat. Okay. So that's what an integer and a float are. Okay. Um, grade calculation. We don't need to worry about that. Type conversions. I just went over type conversions. Um, almost all type conversions. So there's an implicit type conversion and an explicit type conversion. Um, an implicit type conversion happens when you multiply an integer and a float. You'll always get a float. So I'm glad that helped, Michael. So if I am uh, here, I have convert equals 1, point, 1 plus 1.1, and what convert is becomes 2.1. So it, if, if it's going to choose between an int and a float, and it needs the space for a float, it's going to become a float. The other thing I can do is I can divide. So let's say I have... Um, my val 
is 10, 10, and I'm going to print my val divided by 3. So my val is definitely an integer. I am not telling it to print a float. Here I'm just saying my val, which is an integer, is divided by 3, which is another integer. Now what's going to happen here is I get a float out of that. And that is because Python needed the space to add all those 3s to make, to make all of those 3s and a 5. So it automatically chose a float. So that's what an implicit type conversion is. An explicit type conversion is using float, int, or stir. So I can print, let me just show you. This is not a string. Um, if I try and concatenate, Let's see what happens on line 7. I'm going to run it, and all of a sudden I get this error on line 7, and it says, this is not a string plus my int. Type error, that's something to keep in mind, can only concatenate stir, not int into stir. Python knows this is an integer. It knows this is a string, and it will not allow me to concatenate them. Well, let's see if I do something like this. Let's see if I just give it a comma here and see what Python does. I can do it with a comma because Python is not attempting. I'm not telling it to concatenate the string. I'm using the print function and a variable set of arguments. So that plus is different than the comma. If you are unsure, always convert it. Type conversions are quick and they're provided free of charge by Python and you won't get into trouble that way. So the other way to do this is to say plus and convert the integer into a string. If you get a type error, go back and try converting it, especially if you're using a print function and you're getting a type error most likely you just need to convert it to a string. So that does it for type conversions. String formatting. String formatting it really is your friend. Even though some people um, prefer to use the pluses, the format function of a string is very handy. And that's because you can do a lot of stuff with it and it's not complex to use. Um, I think there is a uh, lab where you have to print out the a dollar sign in two decimal places. And to do that, where are we? You want to use the, mo the format modifiers, format specifiers. Here is where you can do a whole lot of stuff. So basically what you're doing is you're controlling the output. We now have to control the input with the input function and most of the time with the print, we're just printing stuff back to the screen. But this can um, make it so that you can be more precise. And um, so um, you can have the number of decimals, sorry, um, if you have yeah, D is decimal, sorry. Binary is if you're going to print it in binary because, let me do this, every single character in Python has a numeric equivalent called the ASCII table and you can go and look that up, but everything has a numeric equivalent and you're printing it in binary, you're printing that numer numerical equivalent. Everything also has a hexadecimal value because Having an, a letter and an, having a letter have a numeric value and a number have a different numeric value wasn't complicated enough. Everything is also in hexadecimal. Don't worry about that. Um, you can do exponent notation. You can do fixed point notation um, and precision. 
So you're going to have a lab, and it's going to ask you to have two spaces after the decimal place. This is what you're going to want to do. Okay, and we can look at that in a minute. I'll just, here, why don't I do that? Do I have a format? Yeah, here's a simple format one. Oh, there's nothing in there. My apologies. So if I'm going to do format, let's say I have my float. One, two, three, four, five. Okay? But I only want to print two decimal places. So I can say my, my float with two decimal places is, let's go back and take a look. It is, this is the notation. All right, so I'm going to have that colon is important, point to F, so it's going to be colon, point to F, and whoops, there we go, and then I'm going to do dot format my float. Let's see what happens. Let's see if I typed it all right. I'm going to do simple format and run it and I have 2.12 because I used it came straight from Zybooks I used open curly bracket colon point to F because I want two decimal places after the float and then I just used the format method inside of a print so that's what format specifiers do. They allow you to be extremely precise in what you're printing out. And you're going to need this one for one of the labs. Um, inferred positional replacement. Okay. So there is, it's either inferred positional replacement or positional replacement. Generally, I don't worry, I just use positional replacement. I don't worry about named replacement. I think that's just, it, it's nice, but it's complex. So what I did here was I did positional replacement. This variable my float is going to be put here. The format statement knows to look for opening curly brace close curly brace, and anything in between that is the format specifier. So if I wanted to say I could just do my float and I have this with two decimal places, this with three decimal places. Now, I did it this way on purpose. This is positional replacement. This my float goes here, and this my float goes here. I have to have both of them. If I don't, if I take this one away and I run this, I get my happy red error, and it says replacement index one out of range, range for positional args tuple. Now, you don't need to know what that, what all of that means. What it is telling you is that you have two places for replacement, but you only have given it one thing to put in there. So it's not going to know to repeat that. You have to be the one to repeat it. So my float, this, this First my float goes here, the second my float goes here. Now if I had a different um, a different variable, I don't I could use it here. And then but and it would be fine. So it didn't have to be my float and my float, it just had to be a variable here and a valid variable there. Um, advanced string formatting. 
You can do a whole lot with string formatting. You can put widths in them. You can do all kinds of things. We're not going to worry a lot about that in this class. You can do alignments. This is really good to know, but we really don't need to worry a lot about that in this class. String slicing. You're going to want to know about string slicing. String slicing is the ability to take a string and cut it up. Remember I said that strings are immutable? They can't be changed once you create them. But you can create strings from other strings. And one of the nice, and, and Python is great with string processing. It gives you all of these abilities. You can split it up by slicing it. You can bring it back together by joining it. Um, or just concatenating it. So this is the ability, string slicing is the ability to create new strings from a single other string by using characters or positional arguments. Because all strings have a length and they have a sequence. And given that, there's all kinds of stuff you can do with it. So simple, where's my slice? That's split. Okay. So um, here's just some examples of splitting a string. Okay. It, my string is this string needs to be split one, two, three, four. And I can split it. Well, what's going to happen when I split it? We'll see in a second. And I'm going to print splitted. And then I have a social security number. Well, what if I wanted to just get the parts of a social security number? How would I do that? Well, I could split social security number by dash. Now, what happens when I slice or split? What happens when I split is you get a list. What happens when I slice? Um, you get a list basically. Well, not necessarily. You can slice by, I'll add that to it. You can slice by saying, give me just these characters. So I'm going to also add here. And I'm going to say, um, Did I get that wrong? I think I got that wrong. Yeah, sorry. Parentheses. Okay. Okay. So there's a difference between splitting and slicing. Splitting gives you a list. Slicing gives you another string. So, so we're just going to walk through this really quick. And by the way, if, if you think that me actually writing code off the top of my head while we're lecturing is better for you, let me know. And we can go back to this way. I thought we could cover more material by having the code pre-written. So I'm going to go and do... Okay, cool beans. Um, I'm going to do simple split, and we're going to debug this. So I have a variable called to be split. To be split has this string needs to be split. What's going to happen when I split it? Well, let's take a look. What happens when I split it is now I have this list. That's what this is. It's splitted is a list of 10 characters. That's what PyCharm is telling me. So let's roll back a second. How did Python know where to split my string? The split function that Python gives you automatically will split on a space. You don't have to do anything. It will simply split based on a space. So 
If you want to split based on spaces, you don't have to do anything. If you want to split on something else, then you do have to do something. So let's continue here real quick. Okay, so splitted is just this list. And that's what happens, by the way, when you print out a list. You're, it's just going to show you those individual elements. So now I have a string called SSN. And I want to get the, the three different parts of my social security number, or this social security number. How do I do that? If, if split normally just splits on a space. Because I can tell split what to split on. I can give it a single character and say, if you find this character, stop and make everything to the left of it one string, and then go and see if there's another one. So that's what basically Python's doing. It's saying, okay, character, character, it's saying not dash, not dash, not dash. Oh, I have a dash. So everything that was not a dash to the left of that now gets put into its own string. And then it starts a new string and it says not dash, not dash. Oh, wait a minute, I now have a dash. And so it's going to take the two characters previous because it had already gotten rid of all those other ones and put that into a different string. And then it's going to go not dash, not dash, not dash, not dash, oh, and, and put that into a string. Literally, that's what it does. So we now have... We'll go back to the debugger. We have SSN is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I want to split this into its individual parts. So I'm going to step over, and you'll see that the parts are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And I did that because I told Python to split with a dash. Now I'm going to get part of parts. So first, I'm going to find the length of the part. That's what this line is doing. And it's going to tell me that I have three parts. So if I want to get the first part, just like we did with string, I'm going to use the zero index to get the first part of my list parts. And then I'm going to use it the index 1 to get the second, and the index 2 to get the third. And now I've got to split something. So this is, I'm sorry, a slice something. So instead of splitting it, which is going to give me a list, I'm going to slice it, which is going to give me a string. And this is slicing it from the fifth character, sorry, from the sixth character, because it's going to, uh, it's going to count one two, one, two, three, four, five, and everything before that is going to, it's going to ignore. And then it's going to go to the tenth character, and everything to the right of that it's going to ignore. So this is going to print S-T-R-I-N, and I actually wanted it to print G. I didn't calculate, didn't count right, so 11. So that's the difference between splitting and slicing. Splitting will get you a list every time, even if it doesn't successfully split, even if there are no dashes. It's still going to give you a list, and that list will be of one element. Slicing is creating a new string from an old string, and it will be some part of that old string. So that is the difference between splitting and slicing. Um, and here are just all kinds of common slicing operations. You can, there's all kinds of stuff you can do. String methods. Python has so many string methods. You can replace stuff in a string. Now, one thing to remember, though, every single one of these methods creates a new string. It doesn't modify the current string. So you have to have each of these be assigned to a variable. So you can replace. You can find, this is nice, you can count. You're going to need that one for a lab. Um, you can compare strings. So we haven't really gone through Boolean expressions yet. 
Um, they kind of introduce it here because you need it for a lab. Um, but we won't really get into Boolean expressions until next week. So basically they're saying you can use a double equal sign and say is, is the string on the left the same as the string on the right? And you'll get true or false. Um, but we're really going to do a deep dive into that next week. You can also change, you can create a new string that's all capital, lower, upper, title. You can do all kinds of things with them. Splitting and joining. I already talked about splitting. Joining simply joins all, if you have, um, let's see what's a good example of joining. That's splitting still. Yeah, you can join by just basically concatenating things together. Okay, name format. I don't normally do this, but I have gotten the, the school does not yell at me for doing this. What is this? Here we go. So this is the solution to lab 2.12. Why am I giving you the solution to lab 2.12? Because Zybooks expects you to understand how to use an if statement when we don't go through an if statement until next week. So I'm giving you the, the, the solution just to lab 2.12, the only lab you're going to get the entire solution to for the rest of the term. So I will post this up there. But basically what we do is we have a user input. We have a variable called tokens. I'm going to split the user input by space, so no special characters. Then I'm either going to use the format modifier to print um, the last name, comma, the first initial, period. And that's the other part. We haven't talked about multi-dimensional arrays, and they expect you to know what multi-dimensional arrays are. I really don't like this lab. Or, so if you have the length of tokens is 2, then you print it this way. If the length of tokens is 3, then you print it this way. This is the solution. It will be on YouTube. Okay, counting characters. Remember I talked to you about needing to count. Is that the one that I did? No. Okay, I thought I had that one up there. Sorry. Counting characters. So this is where you need to use the count function. All right? If you're going to put in N and Monday, and you want to know how many Ns are in Monday. You do that by using the count function. Okay. Creating passwords. This is kind of, this one often, um, This one often catches students off guard because there is a lot of string manipulation. And I think when we first get into doing strings, it is very much, um, you think of a string as kind of this black box. But the truth of the matter is you can pick and pull things out of it and add them up and put them together. So here, you're going to be giving three words. And what you want to do is you want to, first of all, tell them what they entered. Now, here's one thing that most people have a problem, a lot of students have a problem with. The output that you are going to have to put into Zybooks are the words U space entered colon space, and then the three things in order that they entered. I have students send me their scripts or, or their screenshots of their labs and the output, and they're like, I don't know what I did wrong, and it's simply because they forgot to add you entered colon space. And then, so that's part one. You're just going to play back what was entered. Part two is you're going to create two separate passwords, and those two separate passwords are going to be the first word underscore the second word, and the second password is going to be the number, word, and number. Those can all be done with that format statement we talked about and positional arguments. So just like we had positional arguments. Okay, so what's this one? Okay, 
This is similar to Lab 2.13. So, um, okay, wait a minute, which one am I on? Sorry, 2.14, my bad. So there's one that's similar to 2.13. I don't have one that's similar to 2.14. My apologies. Okay, back on track. So you can use the format statement and positional format specifiers to do this. Okay? And then you're going to have to find the number of characters. And you find the number of characters using the len statement. So we have a couple of things to put together here. First, here, I'll just create a new one. New Python file. New. Okay, I know how to create a Python file. Python file. And the name is going to be Okay, so what we have here is somebody's going to have three different variables, and it's going to be specifically two words and a number. So I'm going to say word one, uh, word two, Okay, those are my two words, and then I'm going to have a number, and I'm going to make it 42. Okay, so there are a couple things I want to do now. The first thing I want to do is print, and you entered So this is where that format specifier comes in. Format, word one word two and num okay so i have you entered and i did that there we go you entered is that the right format yes that's the right format so here if i run this don't know why my computer's being slow if i run this I get you entered A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, and 42. And then the second thing they're going to want us to do is they're going to want us to create passwords. So the first password is the first uh, word, underscore the second word, and the next password is the number, the first word, and the number again. So if we look at that password, I can say what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually assign it to a variable because it makes it easier for me later. I'm going to say, I'm just going to do one of these. Whoops. One, two, three. Dot format stir num remember i'm going to have to if it's an integer i've got to to um, change it into a string so i have to convert it and then i'm going to say word one word one stir num and when i print this i get the second password now i didn't do the first password and if I want to know what the length of it is, and I'm going to do a dot format, and I'm going to say PASSWD. This, again, this is positional replacement. And then I'm going to say stir, because if not, it won't work. Of, okay. So I here I've done a type conversion and gotten the length of the string. Here, I'm just printing out a string. So this is similar to what you would need to do 
for 2.14. And that pretty much ends what I've got for the lecture. And I think I managed to do it all in time. So does anybody have any questions or is there anything else you guys would like to see me go over? Okay, if nobody has any questions, I'm going to end it here. And this will be up on the YouTube channel most likely tomorrow with all, uh, no problem, Michael, with all of the scripts. So everybody have a good evening. I'm going to stop the recording.